Hi, hello, and welcome everybody to this ultimate guide of fantasy. I feel like I have the qualifications for this because I was and I always will be a fantasy girly. I've always loved writing fantasy. I will always love writing fantasy. It is still my preferred genre. I just love disappearing into a different world. And no matter whether you're trying to start with fantasy, so you're trying to get into fantasy, or you already are a fantasy person, but you just need more recommendations, you need more fantasy books, I got you, okay? This video is gonna be separated into two parts. So the introduction into fantasy, because fantasy isn't just fantasy, and then the book recommendations. Of course, you can skip to the book recommendations. I'm gonna put timestamps below so you can just scroll through and find the book recommendations. I'm also gonna like separate them into beginner's fantasy recommendations and advanced fantasy recommendations. You can of course read both, but I wouldn't, if you've never read a fantasy book or if it's been years and you're trying to get back into them, I wouldn't recommend starting with one of the tough ones, just because the world building in these is just a little trickier. Let's start with the different kinds of fantasy, because honestly, fantasy isn't just fantasy. The first thing that you can say about fantasy is that there is fantasy with romance, and there is fantasy without romance. Now I will only be talking about fantasy with romance because I do not care about fantasy without the romance. Yes, I've said it. I am a romantic reader. I do not care if there is no romance. What's the point, right? I need a little bit of romance in my life. I need a little bit of giggly. I need a little bit of cuteness. I need a little bit of hearts everywhere. I just need it. I need the cuteness. That's what I'm here for and that's what I'm getting. So within fantasy, there's many, many different kinds of fantasies. There's also many different vibes within the fantasy. So I'm starting with vibes just because I feel like that's an, a category where different books and different kinds of subgenres fit into. So you can either have like a gothic, very, very dark vibe to it. It kind of gives like dark mystical school, kind of like dark academia sort of thing. That's like the gothic vibe. And then we can have like the fairy core vibe. Everything is kind of light, everything is kind of cute, but then people can still stab you in the back, right? That still happens even in the fairy core. We can have a lot of like kind of a modern vibe to it where things are actually set in like a modern world, but people have cell phones. That is also a thing in fantasy worlds. They're not all, they're not all the historical fantasy worlds that you mostly know, like Lord of the Rings fantasy, that's like a historical other world, completely different. Not all of them are like that. So different kinds of fantasy, they can range from just like a little bit of fantasy to a lot of fantasy. So starting with a little bit of fantasy, we have the, what I like to call cozy fantasy things, where you just have a little bit of fantasy mixed into what's actually a romance. And then you could have retellings, which are basically just like fairy tale retellings. So they're pretty like also easy on the brain most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. You have the typical dystopian fantasy, you know, like the Hunger Games and the Divergent series. Those are the dystopian fantasies of my dream in my childhood. You have the typical quest plotline where somebody has to go out on a quest and they have to do something and they can only return home once they've done something specific. That's like the quest line. That's also a thing in most fantasy books. We have something that I like to call real world fantasy. I'm gonna give you an example for that one later but real world fantasy is a thing and you just have a real world and then you have the fantasy world and then the main character who is mostly human just wanders over into the fantasy world and somehow manages to be the best person in this fantasy world and just like free everybody. That's the plot line that goes on in those books most of the time. And then we have high fantasy. High fantasy is what I qualify books that are in a completely different world. Some of them don't even have humans in them. It can happen. It's high fantasy. You can of course always mix these up. I have like a high fantasy that's also like a cozy fantasy book. It's a lot. Fantasy authors have a lot of freedom and they use their freedom very very well. But why do I love fantasy and why do we love fantasy so much? Personally, for me, it's the big things that happen in fantasy. It's also the little things that happen in fantasy. I love that fantasy isn't reality. It's so far off that I don't think, okay, that could happen. In fantasy, when there's somebody who's like sword fighting, I'm like, that's never gonna happen in my life. So I love it even more in this fictional life that I'm living. Another thing that I also love are a few of my favorite tropes can only happen 
in fantasy. Some of them would technically also be able to happen in like dark romance, but fantasy just does it so much better. I am of course talking about the one bed trope that happens a lot in fantasy. That also happens in like regular romance, but the most important trope that I am talking about here is the dagger to throat. Every time I get that trope, I am in love, okay? If the main character is holding a dagger to the throat of like the male main love interest, I I'm speechless. Another big thing is the who hurt you, like when they're looking at each other's scars or something and somebody's like washing the other one and then they're like looking at the stars and they're like, who did this to you? And then they're willing to destroy an entire kingdom just for the main character. That's the kind of thing that I want to read about and that's the kind of thing that I feel like only morally grey fantasy villains can give me. And I am here for that. And with that we're already done with all of the talking about fantasy. We're gonna jump straight into the recommendations. We're gonna jump straight into the books, the good stuff, the stuff you're actually here for to be honest. So I will start with the beginner-friendly fantasy books, just because I feel like that's the most important part. Beginner-friendly. Beginner-friendly is also just like easy fantasy books. You don't have to think too much. They're good for you. So I'm gonna start with a book series that probably everybody has heard of before because it's so good and we all know it. We all love it. Honestly, some people also just hate it, I think, but um, I really enjoyed it and it is really, really beginner-friendly. The Shadow Me series. I am truly hoping that these are in the correct order, honestly, but I think I sorted them the correct way. So we have the Shadow Me series. For, like, introducing the series to you, I'm just gonna hold the first book because, honestly, all of those are heavy. Shadow Me. We have a dystopian fantasy right here that is easy for beginners because it just all starts in a world where, like, there is a lot of magic going on, but the world itself is still the human world. We're still, we're like in the US, we have different sectors. We've had like, it, there was a war, there was a big, big war. And the main character, Juliet, is in prison in the first book. It starts when she's in prison. And then she's like slowly meeting other people in this prison. She's all alone, she's been for years because she is lethal to touch. Nobody can touch her. She just kills everybody who touches her essentially and it's so good. It's such a good book. It also gave us our all-time favorite love interest that everybody always talks about. This book gave us Aaron Warner and it also gave us a lot of love triangles, it also gave us a lot of emotions, but it gave us Aaron Warner and I think the entirety of Bookstagram is very thankful for Tahara Mathi for creating Aaron Warner. We could also talk about the other characters because there are a lot of them. For example, one of my personal favorites is Kenji, but that's just me. Okay, well, let's talk about a few books that are very beginner friendly, especially if you're like in the romance genre usually. So I'm gonna give you some books that I would call very cozy fantasy or like supernatural romance because there is a difference between fantasy with a romance subplot and fantasy with a romance plot, and romance with a fantasy subplot. All different things. And these three that I'm about to show you are romance with a fantasy subplot. Mostly witches, honestly. So the first thing, Payback's a witch. We have this witch who decides to take revenge on her ex. And that's also what the ex-hex does, okay? So they're both like witches that take revenge on their ex. But it's just, they just happen to be witches and everything else is like, human world. It's our world that we live in right now. So I would classify these as witchy undertones in the books. Like reading these books is kind of different to reading actual fantasy because they're more romance. But if you're like trying to get into the fantasy world, this might be a good way to just like get started and get yourself acquainted with just a little bit of magic in your books. Another good one for that in this same category is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. We obviously have one of my favorite tropes of all time, fake dating. It's just unmatched, really unmatched. We have a witch who accidentally summons a demon and then she's fake dating him so that nobody knows that she accidentally summoned a demon and basically gave him her soul or like trying to. It's a really cute one. I really love this. I, I hope that you do too if you're trying to get into fantasy or if you're already into fantasy and you want to try this, great choice. I feel like the next one is also a book that is very easy to get into if you don't have a lot of experience with fantasy. 
Fable. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of Fable. Maybe you have, maybe you've seen it somewhere, maybe you haven't, in which case, I can only encourage you to read it. Fable is a book about a girl who's on a pirate island in the middle of nowhere and her only wish is to get off of this island. And in order to do that, she is trying to make a little bit of money of diving, like diving in the ocean and collecting special stones. And her magic, like the magic in this world is very subtle. We have more of like a pirate fantasy world that we're living in where a little bit of magic is possible, but not a lot of magic. And it's just such a subtle undertone of magic that this is essentially just like a cute piratey romance story that I was just here for. And it was just such a cute book that I loved it so much. I'm just obsessed with this book. I'm obsessed with these characters. It's just overall so cute. And another big important thing about this book is that it's extremely fast-paced. I have a feeling that every time I turned a page in this book, something new was happening and that way, the book didn't feel boring at any point. It was just always keeping me on my toes. And that's, I think, very important if you're trying to dabble into a different genre. You need books that will keep you entertained all the way through. And that book definitely does that. Okay, so sticking with the YA recommendations, we have The Cruel Prince. Now, The Cruel Prince is not one of my favorites because this is technically a bully romance and because I think that there is a lot of miscommunication in this book. However, I think that it is a really, really good book to get into fantasy because it is, again, very fast-paced and it has characters that you can love and characters that you can hate. It's three books and all of them are pretty, pretty fast-paced. Like, I read them in each in a day. It's really, really easy to get through these. Even though they look kind of thick, the font size is big. You can you can read these pretty fast. So essentially, this is one of the books where you have a human who kind of wanders into the fairy world. And in this fairy world, she meets the cruel prince, who is the fairy prince, or one of the fairy princes. And then a lot of things happen, a lot of people get murdered. We also have the dagger to throat trope in here, perfectly executed. I love it. It's a good book to get started and to get into a much more complex world because there is the human world, which is kind of like a parallel universe that you can walk into, but this mostly is set in a completely different fairy world that has its own natural way of being, has its own hierarchy, has its own political system. It's just overall a good place to get started when you're trying to get into fantasy. Then next I want to talk about the book that got me back into fantasy because believe it or not three years ago I had a huge year-long reading slump that ended because I read Akatar. Now, I have put an entire video up on my YouTube channel. You can just watch it up there. I put that up. That is the entire Sarah J Mass universe explained on the reading order of these. Now, I don't care if you read Akatar first or you read Throne of Glass first because Throne of Glass is its own separate thing and that's fine. But I feel like Akatar is a good book to get started with the fantasy again because you have this medieval kind of world, but Feyre, the main character, stumbles into this fairy world and, and she just lives there and you learn about the fairy world in a very calm way. Since you're thrown into it with a person who also has no idea about the fairy world, you learn about it at the same time as Feyre does and it's just overall a very good dynamic of this. Now I feel like one thing that I have to mention is Sarah J Maas is extremely talented at creating relationships between the characters. However, I feel like world building is not her greatest strength. So the world building in this is still good in my opinion and I never struggled with it, but it's just, I have a feeling that it could be a little better sometimes. All right, and with that, I have the like beginner, beginner books, we're done with those. We're now talking about books that I feel like are a little more tricky to get into, maybe because of world building, maybe because of characters, the magical system. You can still read them if one of them sounds extremely interesting to you. It's just that I wouldn't give them to a person who said, okay, this is my first ever fantasy book, like what do I read? I wouldn't give you one of those, but if you really are into them, sure, read them as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna start with here, 
I'm not even sure this qualifies as a fantasy book, but Stalking Jack the Ripper. I wouldn't put this in the easiest pile just because this is very tricky. I wouldn't know if I would put this into fantasy, but we're in Victorian London, right? So it's been a few years since this was realistic. We're talking about Jack the Ripper, so 1888. That's when this whole book is set up. So we're basically like a lot like in the past and we have like a little detective work that's going on. So I would say this is a really, really good book to get into. I'm just not sure if it fits into this fantasy category very well, but I just, I wanted to talk about it because I love it so much. We sort of have a lot of things happening that cannot really be explained very well by science. So I would say this is a fantasy book in, in some senses, and a really good one at that. Next up we have These Violent Delights. Now this, in my opinion, could technically still be read if you're like new to the genre, but it's a little trickier just because it's not as fast-paced as some of the other ones and you have to do a little bit more reading, you have to do a little bit more to understand this world. Now this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. If that scares you, welcome to the club, honestly. It scared me a lot because I get very attached to my characters and I don't want them to die and I've read Romeo and Juliet. So yeah, with all that said, this book and this series, it's a duology, two books, they're incredible. I love them so much. We have Roma and Juliet and they're part of like a gang war between two gangs that hate each other. And Roma and Juliet start this book as enemies, of course. It's a great enemies to lovers romance that is still extremely slow burn and they're trying to figure out a few things together because there is also like a, I would call it a red plague, We're going through the city of Shanghai where they live and it's just done in such a beautiful way, it's done so so well that I just love this book so much and I can only encourage you to pick it up to read it, it's so so good. Okay, moving on to the last YA book of today and after that it's just new adult adult fantasy books. The Shadows Between Us. This is, in my opinion, one of my all-time favorite fantasy books, and I don't know why nobody talks about this, okay? I have not seen many people talk about this book. Sure, it's been a few years since this came out, but it still deserves all the hype. We have a I've come to kill you plotline, which maybe if you're new to fantasy sounds weird to you, but it's just such a good one. So we have Alessandra, who is essentially just angry and everybody underestimates her. So she makes it her mission to marry the Shadow King and then kill him. And it's just so good. All the plotting, the enemies to lovers. We have a true enemies to lovers here, okay? Truly enemies, like literally coming there to unalive him. So, so good. We also have like a very slow burn romance. Of course we do. And then we have such cute relationships that happen between them. I am just obsessed. You can tell by the amount of tabs that I put into this. And I don't tap books that much usually if I don't love them. It's just honestly such a, such a good book. But since it's in a world where there is a completely different system going on, we have a completely different hierarchy, we have different politics going on. I wouldn't say that this is a extremely beginner-friendly book for fantasy, but as your second book, sure, pick it up, it's great. Let's talk about everybody's favorite this year, Fourth Wing. I think that Fourth Wing is a great fantasy book if you are more into the higher fantasy, but also like kind of modern. They don't have phones, okay? We're not that modern. We're not Crescent City level of modern where they actually have cell phones. No, we're in a modern-ish world with a war college where the kids are training to be dragon riders. That's what Fourth Wing is all about. We have really, really cool characters in his and really, really cool dynamics. I struggled a little bit with the writing style of it. I think that the writing could have done a lot better. It seems like this book, and especially the second book, was very rushed. But that also means that it's very fast-paced and that you can just read it very easily. And the plot definitely makes up for the writing. So if you have not picked up Fourth Wing yet, maybe this is your sign to pick up Fourth Wing. Sticking with the adult romance. 
we are now moving to vampires, adult vampires. Now, we all know Twilight, right? This is the skin of a killer, Bella. That's the first thing that comes to mind when we hear vampires. Yeah, I'm not gonna recommend you Twilight. And that is simply because there are a lot better vampire books out there than Twilight. So we have The Serpent and The Wings of Night. This is kind of like vampires meets the Hunger Games. And I mean that in the best sense possible. We have kind of like these war games that determine the next person who can make a grand wish. And most people make the wish to become the ruler of all vampires, right? But the vampire king, he has a daughter who is not a vampire. She is human and she is sent into these war games to fight in them and to just win them. And it's such a good book. We also have like a true enemies to lovers romance. We have a lot of violence in this. We have a lot of who hurt you, who did this to you. And we have a lot of caring about the other person. We also have a lot of plot twists and a lot of betrayal that I just didn't expect from this book. It kept me on my toes. It kept me wanting to read this book. It's just such a good one. And I can only encourage you to read The Serpent in the Wings of Night, especially maybe if you want to dabble into vampires. Great book, great series. Next up, we have from Blood and Ash. Yes, I loved From Blood and Ash. I think the first book, the second book, the third book, that was great. I would not recommend you to read past the third book. It just gets weird, okay? I know the third book ends with a cliffhanger, but just for your sake, stop right there. It's fine. From Blood and Ash is a book about Poppy. Poppy is the chosen one, kind of, okay? So she is chosen to be the maiden be forever pure, she's only ever dressed in white, and she's hidden from everybody, wears a veil all the time, and she lives in this world where everything is just a little bit weird, and people are dying, and there is a war going on outside, but she can't go outside because she's the maiden. So every night she just sneaks out, and she just tries to heal people as best as she can, help in the war, fight a little bit, and then there is this guy who appears First it's like a personal bodyguard, and then it turns out he might not just be a bodyguard. And we have another enemies to lovers romance. It's so cool. I really, really enjoyed this. I really, really loved the male lead character. I think he is incredible. I loved him throughout all the books. In my opinion, yes, these are a little more on the spicier side. Like for a fantasy book, this is very spicy. Not the first one, that's just a little bit spicy, but the second, the third, and then the fourth. I stopped reading the fourth book because it suddenly there was a threesome in the woods and I was just like, what's going on here? Anyway, From Blood and Ash. Really good series. Sticking with the spicier kind of fantasy books, Guild. This is the first book in the Plated Prisoner series. The rest of the series is up there. Just these books are amazing, okay? These books are so, so cool. I really enjoyed them. We have the main character who is called Aurin, right? So she is entirely made out of gold. She's golden, okay? Her hair is gold, her skin is gold, everything is gold. She's gold. And we have King Midas, who kind of has his own personal harem and she is part of it. So she is kind of like his pet. And she's living in a golden cage up, like, above the castle, like on the ceiling of the castle, that's where she lives, she walks around there, and everything he touches turns into gold. Orin is just this huge mystery, but if she knows one thing, it's that she does need to get away from him. And it's so good. This series is really, really slow burn. Like, it takes a book or two to really feel the romance building up, but once it does, it's so good. It's so freaking good. With this, I feel like the first book is a little slower, but once you get into the second book, you are hooked, I promise you. You just have to get through the first one, but it's still very good. Also, this book is on the spicier side again. And then for the last book, do you want to guess which book I'm going to talk about? The Priory of the Orange Tree. This is not a book to start reading fantasy. This book has a very, very complex world building. We have four parallel plot lines 
that all kind of line up and wiggle their way through. We have about 50 different characters that are all important. We do have dragons though, so dragons are always fun, right? But it's just a little complex, okay? There is very little romance. There is romance, of course, otherwise I would not have read this book. But the romance is very, very much a like side plotline and I'm just gonna say it like this, the romance wouldn't need to be there to make this book happen. I think that's the main issue here. There is romance and I think it makes the book a little better, but if the romance wasn't there, this book would still make sense. Which, like, a romance book wouldn't make sense without the romance. A fantasy book like this, that makes sense without romance. But there's still romance, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But this book is so great and I know it's intimidating, okay? I've said this a lot. It's a big one. It's intimidating. It's very, very heavy. I think this is about a kilo that I'm holding right now. But it's such a great book to read if you, like, really are into fantasy and you just want to read a good fantasy book. This is it. It sort of gives off a little bit Lord of the Rings vibes, but we have this female queendom and we have a lot of prophecies, a lot of great warriors, we have magic, we have mages. It's just overall really cool and like this whole book plays on an entire continent. So we have travels in this book that last up to like months because they have to travel from one country to another and from an island to another. So this book is a journey and it's a great one and I can only encourage you to go on this journey and then tell me about it because I love this book so much. Whew. Okay, that was it, everybody. That was it. I am done talking about fantasy. I could talk on for days about fantasy books just because I love them so much. Please, in the comments, tell me what's your favorite fantasy book. I would be so interested in that. So, and also leave a like, subscribe if you don't already, and I will see you for the next video that I make. Bye! There are so many more great fantasy books that I wanted to put in here, but I just couldn't do it. And I feel like more books deserve to be in here. So I'm just gonna put a few on the screen now. And you can just screenshot them and read them as well because they're incredible. And with that, I'm gonna go. Bye! What was that?